Yo, 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 what's up everybody? Welcome back to The Get Down. This is Beats, Season 2, Episode 17. So I'm back from my sneaky little month off from recording and I'm fresh and ready to go and kick on with the show for the rest of the year. I just want to say thank you for all the messages and kind words of support that everyone sent me and all the feedback on the show and all the suggestions that you guys provided. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> So, this week is NADOT week. As this show airs, it will be NADOT week. And I would like to start off the show by acknowledging that this podcast is created on the traditional lands of the Kabi Kabi people, and that the Kabi Kabi people are the traditional custodians of the lands that I live and work on. I also respect that the lands and waterways we all now share have always been places of cultural, spiritual, social and economic significance to the Kabi Kabi people. And I pay my respect to elders both past, present and future. Thank you. This week on The Get Down, we are joined by a Cubby Cubby traditional owner and native title applicant, Brian Warner. Brian has played many roles in his life, as we'll soon get into, but most importantly is the work he does every day of his life, which is being a strong role model for young people and showing people that anything is possible if you work hard at it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to The Get Down, Mr. Brian Warner. Brian, welcome to the show, mate. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Good to see you, bro. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to tell the listeners, um, I met Brian, this sounds really sus, <laughs> I met Brian in a park. <laughs> yeah, we're no. selling things, you know. Uh, yeah. So um, no, I met Brian in a, a local, it's actually quite a significant place for Cubby Cubby people, Muller Park, isn't it? Yeah, Muller, yeah. So... It's a park that I go to with my son and quite often when we moved up here, that's the first place we're sort of drawn to and we go back there trying to create our own pathways, moving from a different state, so we go there a lot. And Brian was there for, was that the Reconciliation Week? Yeah, it was um, a community event. Yeah. Uh, one of the local, uh, what is it, community centres? Yeah. Held, held a day for the community at the park. Yeah, yeah. yeah so and um, I, Brian was there, and there's just something about him. If you when you see the photos of the man, he's strikingly handsome. <laughs> he's tall, tall, dark, and handsome. But I saw you, and I'm like, who is this bloke? You know, who? I, and I didn't even know that was going on because my missus gets the message about those things. We just happened to bump into that group there, yeah. and there was something about you, the way people were going up and speaking to you. I assumed you're an elder, but you're not that old. No, no, I'm not, I'm not an elder, no. No, I wouldn't, no, I'm not old that old. But I still get called Uncle Brian. <laughs> yeah. I could see the way people were speaking to you that you were important, you know. So I just randomly approached him, snuck off to the toilets for a start. <laughs> yeah, I, by the way, I've given up smoking. Oh, good Three man. Three weeks now. Good man. No, mm -hmm. no durries for this, Murray? That's right. No durry for this, Murray. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we had a quick conversation and um, Brian has agreed to come to the show. Since then, I've found out that he's been a guest on uh, Black Magic Woman yes. podcast. Yes. And um, I did listen to parts of it, but I didn't want to come in with too much knowledge about you. So let's, uh, let's find out a little bit about this man who is Brian Warner. So what I've got first, mate, is can you just tell us a little bit about where you grew up and what your childhood was like? Oh, grew up in childhood. I tend to not talk about that because um, I went to 11 different schools. Jeez. Um, our parents moved a lot, a lot of domestic violence. You know, my mother moved away from my father when I was 10. Yeah. Um, at the time, I told her that was the greatest move she ever made. But now my father just passed away recently. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we ended up becoming good friends in the last four to five years. So, yeah, sorry to hear yeah, that. Yeah, you tend to forgive, you know, and... Um, 
lost my mother back in 2006 so she's kind of my idol you know yeah. she raised us at, um, three children since I was age of 10 because um, I was the eldest of the three uh, my sister was seven and my little baby brother was one or two yeah and um, yeah she ra she raised us um, as a single parent you know on suddenly benefits and uh, you know, housing commission at home. Yeah. There was times when our electricity would turn off <laughs> and you have to try and be resilient and think, how, how are we going to live life? So she'll go, oh, why don't you go down and do some running at the school? Yeah. I remember by the time I was 17 and it became a running about 10.5 seconds in sprints. Jesus. because On 100 metres. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. But it was, of course, of our scenario. I went down train in the morning so I could use the school showers. Because, yeah. you know, when the electricity would turn off, it was a hot, <laughs> you know, the hot water system was used on electricity back in the day. So, um no, it's life, isn't it? So, it's innovative thinking, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she loved it. She, yeah, she didn't mind having the cold showers because she was the elder person, the elder statesman. And so most afternoons were spent at the footy club having a shower there. Yeah, <laughs> like, that was life. Well, you know, my friend, my sister would go to her friend's house. Yeah, and then people come pick up little brother. But that, that's life. Um, she bought a little gas stove thing to boil eggs and two minutes noodles. Yeah. And then when the money come in, that's how we managed to get by. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would never change a thing because it makes you the person who you are today. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I've got a question towards the end that is along along those lines, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll, get to, we'll get to that one. So you grew up up here? No, like I said, I, we moved around a lot. Yeah. And I um, actually grew up in Brizzy, down here. Um, one of the last places where we kind of settled was Tarragindi. Yeah. And an uh, amazing place. Um, met a lot of, had a lot of non-Indigenous friends during that period. Taught me a lot of, uh, I don't know, uh, things you shouldn't try, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it was the first time I've ever heard of snow dropping. You're like, what the hell is snow dropping? <laughs> <laughs> that's an old term yeah yeah rain people's clotheslines right i was like what the heck and um <laughs> yeah it was quite 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 interesting but um during that period uh, our our family our aboriginal family used to visit us all the time so we're mm. still being immersed strongly in the culture mm. and then sometimes they would say it's time to return home so yeah they, all of a sudden you pack your gear your one bag like yeah. one footy bag that was it that was your life yeah then you hop in the car and you spend a couple of months with your family. Yeah. Going out, doing all sorts of odd-end jobs. And just like, Tordenen? What the hell's Tordenen? That's where you... It's like ring bark and where you chop the tree. But you're out there with all these old elders. Yeah, And they're nice. teaching you about your culture. But it was mm. the only way they could all be together. But Yeah. And you're getting paid. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, nice. like, for me, it was like $5 an hour or something. Yeah. Like, lots of money, man, you know. But... But learning as well. Mm, learning, yeah. I was 15 when they started asking me to come along and do those things. Yeah, right. And then there was times like mustering, you know, cattle. But it was always with our elders or our elder, elder yeah. crew. Yeah. Yeah. So traditionally your uncle does that with you? Is that right? Or is this just like your blood uncle? Yeah, that was my blood uncle. Yeah. And yeah. then there was also um, my mum's elder. Uh, my mum was the eldest of the family, but her sister husband too yeah so he we call him uncle and he used yeah. to take us out old vietnam vet, veteran you know yeah. he was tough yeah. and um not a lot of people realize how many aboriginal people went to vietnam mm, yeah. yeah he he was one of the few and i always thought of him as an amazing man he was tough on people and people couldn't understand mm. you know what he was about but mm. i enjoyed my time with him because he made sure that there was other like he was like a leader Mm. And so he made sure that there was elder statesmen around. And mm. It was amazing. We learned how to shoot, ch track animals, that mm. type of thing. Mm. When yep. these elders were mustering and or with us or part of the the scene. Yeah, well, that's good yeah, to learn. I don't like to talk too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so who's your mob then? My mob. My yeah. mob is Cubby Cubby and Waka Waka. Yeah. So that's on my mum's line and my dad's line is in Barungam. That's out near Chinchilla Way. Okay. But yeah. Cubby Cubby's here today where we stand yeah. on the Sunshine Coast or 
It's a big area in yeah. South Queensland. It's massive, um, isn't it? Yeah, Cubby goes from Pine Rivers, where Redcliffe, out to Dabro in the south. And then when we track it up, just above Noosa, where the Kalula um, National Park is, mm. then it heads across the Mount Bulpur, and then bring it west. And then you still keep going north. <laughs> then you get to Buxton, right? But, um, yeah, the native title and cultural heritage bodies are talking about extending us to Childers and uh, Woodgate. So, yeah, eventually yeah. that might. Okay, that is a lot of area. That's huge. Yeah. 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 So where, where I'm from, I'm from South Australia, so it's the Ghana mob down there in Ghana and then um, uh, Night and Jerry. As it, as it comes down, so in South Australia, Adelaide, Adelaide right they down. They border to, each other. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's big. But when I before I moved up here, I wrote to remember I was telling that Facebook page. I wrote to them. Oh yeah, they, they, saying I'm coming up, sort of just as a respect. You know, wrote to them and said I'm coming up to live on your lands. I put up a post. I'm moving to Gubby Gubby lands and to be welcomed because I'm I'm a big believer in it, that it is your land. You know, and uh, we we sort of living on it and. Um, they they mis- misrepresented me saying it's Gubby Gubby. Gubby so yeah. I just put out a record saying this record was made on Gubby Gubby land. Yeah. And when you told me the other week, I was like, fucking hell. No, 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 you didn't, <laughs> you didn't make a mistake. It's like, if I take you back a bit, like if um, majority of my people are growing up in Waka Waka country. But yeah. my grandmother and mother wanted me to focus on this country. So where's Waka Waka then? That's to our western borders. Okay. They're probably the second largest Traditional owner group in South East Queensland. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so the majority of our people focus there, and they wanted me to focus on this part of the world. So mm. that's why I'm here, hence today, you know. Mm. But when coming into this, it's like there was a period of time it was known as Carby Carby, then it got known as Gubby Gubby. Yeah. And it was what it is with the different leaders at the time. But when we came back for this last push for our native title consent, um, all the elders agreed to go on back to what it was first named as and get rid of the word or try and minimise the word gubby gubby and leave it as carby carby. Is is the in Adelaide the K is like g is that the same up here? It's the same it's kind of the same, yeah. It's like, like a little k- 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah it's like like a G. Yeah, but um growing up we called it like cubby. Like like cubby I think cubby house, yeah. you know, like yeah, so it is what it is for people. And I think it's important that the real definition is kept because hmm. that's your language. Yes. You know, so that's pretty important so, that it is, re, you know, put back on track. I we, see a lot of reference online, Cubby Cubby or Cubby Gubby. Yeah, like you the know, So they're thing. confused. Yeah. You know. So, but we're going to name it Carby Carby. And yeah. That's the way it's going to be known much to, you know, some majority of people... Um, not against it, so yeah. let's let's keep moving. Yeah, you know. So, f- <laughs> can you explain what that means, like to be a native title applicant? Uh, a roller coaster. <laughs> I have to say to people, it's like being in Survivor on cocaine. You know, they yeah. show Survivor yeah. where they're voting each other out. Man, all oh, right, man. When you got loyal people, they can still backflip. It's like, man, yeah. this is intense, right? It's a roller coaster. Mm. You just got to trust in the, your allies and your system. That's what it, man. That's kind of what it feels like. So, what are you trying to achieve? Well, um, okay, through native title, it's about consent determination. It's about having Kabi Kabi as the traditional people of this land. It's saying these are the people. Yeah. So that's why we're pushing for this. Um, people think we make a lot of money. Actually, I'll tell you now, we don't make money. Mm-hmm. Look at me, I never even had a sleep last night. I'm wearing the clothes from yesterday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> anyway, sounds good. Um, yeah, and but when you come into it, it's sort of like you, they're based on elections to become an applicant. So okay. you give instructions to the court and to be give those instructions, you have to become an applicant. Most people think it's seven people. But when you're an applicant, you're one person. Mm. Yeah, and they get confused with the legislation, the terms, the references. No, 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 we're not out here representing ourselves. We're representing the collective as one person, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm. And so when we make a decision, we have to make a decision that based on a majority amongst the the seven elected 
and then move with that for our people. And then when you get to a decision, it's got to come back to your people mm-hmm. to make the overall decision. It's, lot, it's very goes against a non-Indigenous, you know, culture. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So white fellas don't really understand what you're trying, trying, to, trying achieve. to achieve. Yeah. yeah. And so once we will get our consent determination, then we'll have our prescribed body corporate. We'll be called your regist- registered native title, title body corporate. So that's your RNTBCs, you know. A lot of, Lots a- of acronyms. Acronyms, you know, <laughs> and... Uh, and a strange process for many people to understand. I'm actually the secretary of our PBC, which will become our RNTBC. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's it's a very trying and complex situation. Um, but in the meantime, I I have a focus on trying to build economic outcomes mm. or social sustainability economic outcomes. So mm. one of them is to focus on employment initiatives. Mm. So at the moment, we managed to create a land care traineeship. Mm. And so there's 10 jobs with them, and I became the mentor of those trainees. So it's the aspect is in order for us to eventually create our own ranger program or our own become brokers in offsets. Mm. Mm. Where, yeah, so yeah, for sure. For young people? Yeah, for young people yeah. to be involved. But yeah. now we need leaders to take over, you know, to managing... It's going to grow, yeah. and because most of our culture should be focused on, yeah, focused on our assets. Yeah. So our assets uh, should be our land. Yeah. Isn't that what we were fighting for? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what native title isn't land rights, so people need to understand that. Yeah, too. that's <laughs> yeah. But we, you're giving land. It feels like you're kind of getting rid of land to get some land. It's it's one of the most hardest trying positions to be in because I never actually put my hand up it was my <laughs> elders that put me into this position yeah. and so I'm here today um, because of my elders and so it's an obligation that you can never refuse yeah. I actually refused them for 20 something years they actually <laughs> approached my wife and she says the one says yes for me I was like you don't know what you're doing here <laughs> but um, I'm five years at it now and yeah. um, I refuse to um, stand down now it's like once you start seeing some of those outcomes like every each person has their own particular focus or their outcome right Mm -hmm. but mine has always been about job sustainability yeah but then due to the removal of most of people due to you know um being removed to missions or you know being um hate to say it you know the frontier wars and all all those um things over the year that has decimated our people. Yeah. Now we're not living on our own country, yeah. you know. You were, there was only one family group that managed to remain, but they had to say there was some other n- nationality or yeah. culture to stay here. But, um, yeah, so to, to remain on country is important. So that's why I came back in my late 20s to live back on the sunny coast. Yeah. Because that was my mother and my grandmother's wish. So I obeyed them, you know. Yeah. And, but I always, um, what was the question again? <laughs> Explain what native title yeah, is. Yeah, so, yeah. So come back and it's it's the push. It's the push for our people so to just come the, back. So, you know, sorry. The, no, you, you know, go. That's where I was heading. So the, with the removal of our people. So I noticed there's a lot of demand, but we don't have a supply of people. So the next push is now we have to look at land like has home ownerships that build homes on. So being trying to drill this into Sunshine Coast Council, Noosa and Gympie Councils. Mm. At the moment, have a push with Moreton Bay because that's the second part of our uh, native title push. Mm -hmm. Our first push is the Sunshine Coast area to these other areas. Then it'll come back that way. Then I'll head back north again. Crazy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. So it's like <clears throat> my, my researching it, knowing you were coming on, it's not, like you said, it's not about... You want to chew it? No, I'm right, okay. my, trying to quit. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about land, but so it's native titles, but it's ownership of of your culture and yourself. Mm. Is, would, that, would that be right? Would I be right in saying that? It's like... Okay. That, so with the... So, 
if we just take that back a step, so I'm trying to look at home ownership or have some sort of housing mm. accommodation so people can remove back, can come back to country. But back to your question, your your recent question, mm. what was it again? Is the difference between land? Mm. Is, is so? Is it about mm. ownership of culture and and? So I see native title like a land grab. It's not like a land rights. Land okay. rights would mean all the country. Yeah. So okay, with, okay. with native title, I don't know if you ever looked at a native title map. After consent determination, looks like a polka dot. Yeah. Map. Yeah. 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 That's because those polka dots is actually the Aboriginal land or the freehold land that they've been handed. Oh, now, right. There's not a lot of education in native title, and I think that needs to start coming out. What native title is about, yeah. but then. Here in Queensland, I think it's the only thing in the country where cultural heritage sits under the Native Title Act, so that's a state act. Yeah. So cultural heritage belongs to all the place. So sort that's right. not land rights either. Um, yeah. But you got one about the preservation of your culture and the other one about the protection of your culture. Yeah. So the two acts sort of try and combine that way. Yeah. So you're involved in two Everything places. comes yeah. into it, language, you mm. know. Everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Protection of waterways, protection of the actual mm. land itself. Mm. Hence, with the people had to that ranger thing because some of them don't like to talk about this residual, this intangible, this tangible culture. They just go, no, no, it's all culture. Mm. No, but if you can break it down into archaeology terms, it's sort of like you start to get this feeling grip to what culture. You know, you've got specific people who know more about trees and the mm. Aboriginal uses of those trees. Mm bush medicines and bush foods are now big on tourism and mm. environmental genders, where 20 years ago they weren't. Mm. Why is this all coming to fruition now? And the big thing is, you know, when scouts have been doing it for like yeah. <laughs> forever, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and <clears throat> so does it fall under, would, 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 would not, not allowing, you know, Chinese-made boomerangs, to become in, are you fighting for stuff like that? The Aboriginal art must be done by Aboriginal people, and yes, yeah, you know, but and artifacts that, that can't be sold. Because I get so annoyed if I go into a shop and I see a dig and it's made in China, mm. I'll let them have it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I go with my tree, yeah. but we can't fight every battle, and they need to start setting up committees. So, not so suppose you know, it doesn't have to always be a traditional owner or custodian doing the leading the charge. They should be setting up committees at a state level, mm. and they should they should be paid people from the arts industry going out mm. and doing this. Major major place that does this is Cairns, Mariba area. Yeah. It's huge for ripping off the, yeah. know, the traditional yeah. owners with yeah. um, fake art. And that's what you, that, you can only refer to. People playing like, the did. People playing the did. Yeah. It's sort of like, are they authentic? Yeah. You know? That, that also comes up as a as a problem too nowadays. Yeah. Where in the past it never used to be a problem. Oh, white fellas playing the did? Yeah, yeah. 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 But now uh, there's understanding the reference in terms of cultural misappropriation or yeah. cultural appropriation, yeah, you know. Yeah. Which is huge at the moment, isn't mm. it? Yeah. So some of the stuff you talk about is cultural appropriation. Mm. And it's huge. It's massive and it's trying to oh man, we've got enough in our lives to deal with <laughs> <laughs> everything about a culture seems to I don't know. Like there's a recruitment company giving themselves the name indigenous on the front of it. 100% non-Indigenous owned. Fuck. That's like McDonald's. They say 100% Australian beef. That's just the name of the company. That That's the name of the company. Provides yeah. the beef. Jesus, yeah. that's a bit rough, though. Yeah, no, but it? people don't look into these things. But no. do you knock that company when they're doing great Yeah, they do. Too? Yeah. You know, so... Yeah, it's like, a hard one. It's a hard one. I... I you got to tend to push your emotions to the side when you're in this setting and mm. sort of like, what is that end goal? Are we here about a future mm. or are we here about, do we try and fight every battle? No. Yeah. No, you can't fight every battle. You've got to try and set up committees or set up some sort of agenda or sort of like focus on the schools where your skills are best at. Yeah. And then move forward from there. Yeah, I, I, I tell you what, when I moved up here, that's the first thing I noticed, I said to my wife, I said, fuck, it's very Anglo up here. Like, where's all the black fellas? <laughs> and I didn't, you know, I, I like to sort of be connected because I, when I initially come up here, I applied for a job at Refocus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't get it. It was a, 
a um, identified role, so I, I didn't get it. But it wasn't until the they had the rally out at Cotton Tree that I went there for the Black Lives Matter. Oh, I went yeah. there and I met a heap of people, you know, and I'm like, oh, you know, it's there was big turnout. Yeah. And I'm like, where are you guys all hiding? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the black face? Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I met someone there and they, to this Aboriginal learner driver company up here, Oh, yes, they're based out of Caboolture. Murray's on the move. Yeah, yeah. So that, that, was it? That yeah, that's, so that's a good one. And uh, I just think, um, and I see a lot of the the, the campaign out here, no diaries for the for this Murray and stuff like that. So, in all case, Aboriginal. Yeah, there is. I guess it, coming from South Australia, it's, it's huge down there, cultural centres. It's, it's it's massive down there. Yeah, you it's know. quite different here. Yeah, I don't um, see a lot of it. I don't know if it was because, you know, part of us... You know, part of the black followers is uh, a shame factor. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. It's a lot. I know that's huge in our culture. So, you know, yeah. being that shy or shame. Yeah. But if you look at me, I've got no shame. You shouldn't have, mate. Yeah, yeah. Proud, but, buddy. but it's kind of like, i got no money to build a base. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> if I had that, I'd set one up. Yeah. But it's negotiating those outcomes, too. It's sort of like, um, for our group, maybe there could be an arts uh, shop front here yeah, and mm. at the biggest pla- you know, shopping centre here on the Sunshine Coast, inside mm. Plaza. So there could be one there. Don't know. But managed to get one out of uh, two years, what do they call it, pop-up? Yeah. So they're quite cheap in leasing, right? Yeah. But m- money, they only last a month or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But two years, come on, like. I'm pretty good negotiator. Yeah, you know. Um, I heard you. I heard you have an uncanny way of getting yeah. getting what you want. <laughs> an uncanny way, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. You don't come at as aggressive. Um, people think. Um, I don't know. It's a different way you you learn. It's education, I suppose. And mm. I, you know, going to eleven different schools. Think about it. Mm. And fitting in, fitting in. Yeah. And most people take ages. It's sort of like, um, you know, my uncles work on the theory. You walk into the pub and you hit the biggest fella in there, and yeah. you know you're the you're the king of the pub. I was like, yeah. no, nah, you don't work on that theory. You go, who's the coolest kid at school? Yeah. And so you you challenge to a contest, and if you get close to beating them, or even if you actually win, all of a sudden you become one of the cool kids. Yeah. So it's you know it's immersing yourself quickly. Mm. I don't know. Mike describes me as BWS, right? <laughs> and then, you know, not being one of spirit, actually, the Brian Warner story. He goes, this fella's got a story for everything. And I was going, oh, come on, don't, don't knock that off, right? But um, he goes, no, 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 no. It's, we sent you in for this recruitment job, you know, working for the, ta- we were working at the ATA tax office. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, the big tax, right? You know, <laughs> loved it, loved it. And um, he goes, when you come out, you know, everybody who's in that room, you know, how many children they got, you know, where they live, you know, all about their family, you know, everything about that person. Yeah, it's because of going to live in different schools. You had yeah. to immerse yeah. yourself fast to, yeah. to ingrain yourself into the, the environment. So, Who had good at having a yarn, mate? <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's that BWS, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's good to get, you get information out of people and then um, there's trust. There's, mm. there's trust. I've found with doing this, you know, meeting people. Some people I approach and I've never really spoken to them before and then you speak to them for an hour and a half and then you're friends, you know, and then it's like, hey, man, you know, rah, rah, rah. And, and there's like some people, you know, I've reached out to some famous people on the show and it, it trips me out because I've listened to their music for years or I've watched them play footy for years and it's like now you're on a first-name basis talking to them Talk you want to go out and have a drink? Yeah, you know, so it's, it's a bit of a spin out. And you just find out they're just normal people. Not, yeah. Not some people who are, like, you know, um, what are they talking about? The rich, the middle class and the poor. Yeah. But you just find these people don't even have a have a class. It's sort of like, nah, man, we're just normal people. Yeah. Just trying yeah. to have fun, enjoy our life. Yeah, yeah. Unless the Elon Musk. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. So I just want to jump back a little bit here. Um, um... The rumor out there, you're a pretty good footy player. Yeah, rugby league. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah, I, I was pretty good. Yeah, I don't look, talk about it. <laughs> it's funny, like my little brother was pretty good too. And by the time 
I don't know, but when you get a professional career or something. So I was in customs and then tax office. Yeah. And every time we had a party, he would be in a contest with me. I was a better footballer. Brotherly, you know, love or sibling rivalry, what they call it, don't yeah. they? But I just had enough of by that time, you know. Mm. So, I, yeah, I stopped talking about it. Yeah. And, yeah. and all the the females around us go, oh, yeah, it was your heyday, you know. Yeah. But he was still playing. He ended up getting um, player player of the year or something recently uh, before he committed suicide, my brother. But, oh, fuck. Yeah, about three years ago. Shit, sorry, bro. So it's all good. But, um, um, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. That's um, that's life, right? You know, you didn't yeah. want to play, but you didn't want to play. No, yeah. I left when I was about twenty-seven. Yeah, right. After I was twenty-seven, me, um, I, I don't know. People go, "You were so great. Yeah, uh, you, you don't watch a game or TV, or you don't watch the game." I said, "No, I get frustrated. No, nothing about the game has changed. You know, uh. they might change a few rules, but it's still the same concept. It's." Mm. It's had a, I don't know, it's for me it was always about line speed. And most people see the game as, as a structured environment. But if you have different, I don't know, if you can catch the ball and make sure that your forwards are strong and mobile and you move the forward pack around or you move them sideways, so that's not working. You hit up the guts, right? Yeah. You have all these type of things inside your head as how you're going to move the opponent. And it all breaks down to speed. Yeah. It's line speed. So I would buy my team based on line speed of the forward pack to the fullback. And the fullback would have to run about 10.5, maybe 10.4 seconds. He has to be fast and built like a machine. And like every time he hits that ball up after being kicked him, it's got to be run into a brick wall. Yeah, fair. Yeah, because that's how you get your... Your, your movement happening then. Mm. Because you have people get excited on your team. Bang, he's did it. He's hit the line. He's broken the wall. He's broken the first play. Bang, you get in. Keep pushing. <laughs> but, yeah, boring football for me. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> I can't uh, watch a game. <laughs> <coughs> I'm, uh, like, again, I'm an Adelaide boy, so it's AFL down there. Mm-hmm. We, I think they tried to have a rugby team for a while. lasted about one season. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Adelaide Rams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so we'll skip over that one no, there. No, no, but um, it's funny. Um, I went to Cobram, Victoria when I was about, I don't know, I think it was 26, 25. Went down there for fruit picking. Yeah. And... Um, End up playing for one of the local AFL teams down that oh, way. Oh, nice. First game, run into a goalpost. You? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the third game, they've given me this bog. And I'll be ringing up my missus, and she was in England. Go, they must think I'm really shit, because they're giving me these bog awards. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't until two years. You know, I'm going, they keep giving me this bog thing. <laughs> I must be really crap, you know? Man, i tell you what, it's easy to kick that ball when you're in the, at the end of the square, right? Mm. And that goes through the pace. Yeah. I'll tell you what, don't have to run. Yeah. Right? So, so I thought that was easy. <laughs> so what were you full forward? No, I was a wing. I was oh, on the wing. Yeah. Man, I was like, Christ. Yeah. See, they'll be getting at you all way. You're a big boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was playing wing and it was all like, man, the speed. It was like using your speed. It was mm. like you run to the open space, bang. It was yeah. like you're yeah. looking for that. It's a different concept to rugby league. but yeah, you very got, different. But you got the same principles. Yeah. Line speed. Yeah, yeah. And which bring me back to watch the Brisbane Lions, you know, when they were going through their three-peat or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. They had speed. Yeah, they were now good I, team back then, mate. Yeah, and I started to get the idea of my position that we were mm. playing. It was speed. But that was so easy, kicking from the edge of the box. Yeah, bang. <laughs> I thought that was great. <laughs> <laughs> you can hit people if you want to, but you don't have to. You don't have to, no. <laughs> and you're allowed, like rugby, you're allowed to tackle underneath the knees. Mm. I can grab them on the shoulders, whereas footy, that's a no-no. No-no, uh, no, yeah. And yeah. so, um, remember the first tackle I did in AFL, they wanted me to teach the boys how to tackle the way I tackled. Because yeah. so like, you didn't have to be aggressive. It's sort of like you could move the guy's arms around so they drop the ball, and all yeah. of a sudden, you got to, mm. boom, the ref's giving you, the on umpire's the giving you, yeah. Ref and rugby league umpire, and you know, but the umpire's giving you the penalty to yeah. your way, and you're like holding the ball, yeah, holding the ball, yeah. and it was the way I was tackling. Mm. Yeah, I've had mates come over from overseas and I've shown them AFL, and they like, you know, they're wrapped up or they drop the ball, mm. and we're holding the ball, and they're like, 
He dropped it though. How's he holding it? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, he's holding the ball. Bit it's of about moron. Yeah, it's about moving those arms so that um, that uh, you know, yeah, the ball drops out. Yeah, right. That would have been good. To see. Yeah. Is there any footage of you playing on on the internet? Oh, rugby league or um, no, not no. anymore. No, I don't know. If, um. Some of my old footy clubs used to video the game, but none yeah. has ever placed or yeah. I never, I never took any uh, any family or friends personally. So yeah, I, it would have been nice to see. Yeah. yeah, so it's just your choice. You didn't want to do that. You didn't want to play, so you moved on to do other things. Uh, majority of our people, I don't know if you listen to the Aboriginal people, sports everything, right? And that's what they grow up to want to be. But I also idolise, um, you know, ambulance men, policemen. Yeah, yeah. We, we, sure. we got the Black Lives Matter, uh, but for us at the time, you know, when I was 10, being removed, it was the police that saved us from my father. You know, yeah. it was pretty violent then. Yeah. And I never seen them as black or white. I just seen it as an environment where I got taken out of them. Yeah. Um, and you respect that, that, that they were helped? Or yeah, they helped. still felt it was... Removal. No, no, no. They helped. They took my mum, my sister, yeah. my little brother, me out of, out of this uh, yeah. very violent environment. And um, yeah, no, I, I respected things and I took more notice of mm. these people like teachers. I start, even though high school wasn't that great, but uh, you even respect teachers and mm. all these people who invest so much, you know? Mm. And yet we admire someone who runs around the ground for two hours. And, yeah. And but does the odd training five yeah. nights a week or something? Yeah. Oh, come on. These these people put more effort in and they get paid less. Yeah, true. And so I wanted to do something where, I don't know, that's why I went to customs. Yeah. I actually come back from overseas, get my degree, right? Yeah, what's your degrees in? My degrees are in um, justice. Yeah. So I looked at, like, Integrity, I thought integrity is huge. Yeah. And I looked at myself personally and I, what I want to fight for and I believe in fairness, right? Yeah. So I looked at the screen, I can do this. So I managed to get through, didn't fail a subject and then um, end up working for customs and the yeah. tax office and worked for various sections <coughs> in tax and worked in the waterfront ma environment, environment mainly for customs and learned a lot about intelligence mm -hmm. and risk. And so my second degree is in intelligence. Yeah, right. Yeah, graduate. That's our call. Yeah. <laughs> graduate certificate in intelligence, it's cool. I remember this fellow comes to me, where can I get a graduate certificate in smartness? Listen here, brother, this is how you get it. <laughs> Ten Sudoku's, a hundred crossword puzzles. Next minute, you're <laughs> beating the buzzer out this hail of century test, I tell you. <laughs> that's how you get it. And he goes, really? I went, nah, I'm fucking kidding, right? I mean, I'm <laughs> No, it's a lot of research and <laughs> a lot of writing. And it's a predictive modeling. Sometimes you got to, it's like an art form. People make assumptions, I guess, but it's like having this inert ability, like, you know, woman sense, you know, like yeah. or the sixth sense. It's yep. like having <coughs> this day job, you take effect. And it actually comes out. I remember I cracked this big case for tax and they go, how you did that? I'm like, I'm a black tracker, yeah. you know. It might show me as a black tracker tracking the land, but yeah. it comes down generational and it's come out in this form. Yeah. That's my, my bloodlines. It's all sort of something differently. Yeah. Yeah, right. You see it different. You think abstractly. You Is it abstract yeah. or out of the box? Mm. And we tend to do that when you watch athletes on the footy field. They go, oh, jeez, did you see that black fellow today yeah. on the footy field? Yeah. He was so out of the box. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like that term... Oh geez, he's good football player for an Aboriginal. Like I don't, I don't like that. But there's no doubt about <laughs> Aboriginal players have something white players don't. <laughs> yeah, you know they got you know, all it is. You can say is they got a gift. You know? Yeah, I and do, like there's a player down in Adelaide, Eddie Betts. You yeah, know, yeah, you know, I heard of him. Fuck me, dead. He does some things. And Andrew McLeod, he's like a dual Norm Smith medalist. So he won the the medal for the best player in two grand finals. Mm -hmm. Just they just do freakish things like. The way they read the ball, yes, like it's an egg shaped ball for fuck's sake, you know. And, and the they they play as if yeah. it's a soccer ball, you know. It's like this Eddie Betts, he does some freakish shit, man. And like he moved back to Carlton, but the state loved him, man. Like when, oh, when yeah. he was in Adelaide, mm. they loved him. <laughs> it's just the way the ball bounce, and they there for it. So I just wanted to trial something different, and see, you know, you mm. want your people 
not just becoming sports players because mm. you think about being, I don't know, I'm a stats person, right? So you start to add the stats. In rugby mm. league, you've probably got your top 10 players or on the top money, but then you look, there's 17 football teams and yeah. so you could be over 2,000 players overall and only 10 of those 2,000 go on to make and then they get... Yeah. All these contracts. You were talking about branding before. Yeah. And one of them, thank God, is Jonathan Burson, Aboriginal yeah, boy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the only fellow out there with a big brand making movies. Yeah, yeah. It's your longevity after football. Then 30, you end with all the injuries. Mm. Most of them go on to be bouncers or something. Yeah. I started looking at it. I was like, oh, people need to think longer. Yeah, for sure. You know? Sustainability. Mm. By the time they get to retirement, they probably would have earned more than what these footballers have earned. Mm. You know, it just takes a little bit time, more long, time. Mm. Yeah, but just I take a different uh, look at things. Yeah, I just saw a, a meme on the internet the other day, and obviously it's, it happens a lot in America with African Americans, and it's like, d don't, don't say to a tall African American, "Do you play ball?" Mm. You know, ask them, are you a doctor? Are you a, are you a lawyer? You know, just because they look the part, just because mm. they're tall and that, it's not all they can achieve. That's right. You know, so it's um, pretty... Um, yeah, so they're yeah, breaking, so they're breaking <coughs> the, the modelling over there in America. Yeah. And that's what we need to do here. Mm. And we are starting to do it. There's a lot of deadly black fellows that... Mm. Some have law degrees, some have accounting degrees. Yeah. You think about it, things we never thought we'd... I managed to, you know, we're starting to build a workforce. Mm. It's amazing. We're not just going into trades, too. We're mm. going on all different areas. My uncle's a doctor. Yeah, so nice. Yeah, how's that, you know? Yeah. So do you think, do you think as an Aboriginal Australian, you are up against more, like, do you, when you go for job roles, do you, do you feel racism when you're applying for roles? Do you think you're, you've got to fight harder to get a position? Um, before I even go for any job, this is the first thing that goes inside my head, right? Epistemology. Epistemology means a theory of how one has grown up. So, oh, so you start thinking about uh, the people that seem to be on you, and it's a non not you. No, I'm not talking you mm, now. Yeah, interview yeah. me for this radio yeah. segment, but for the job, and um, it, you've got three non-indigenous people in the room. But they seem to have a relationship between one another. So it's building this culture within that culture. Yeah. So then you look at the organisation, and then all of a sudden it's a non-indigenous culture. Yeah, yeah. And so it's sort of like, oh, my dad was a policeman, so I grew up become a policeman. It's that mentality. Mm -hmm. And you look at these guys; it's a one culture, and you're breaking into that. Yep. Yeah. And sort of like, there's times where you think, oh, why? Oh, do I really want this? Do I want to work here? Yeah. I love this field of work, but do I love these people? Because mm. to me, it's always love what you do. And thank God for me, I've always loved what I've done. Like, took customs six years, loved it, raved about it, never wanted to leave. But I didn't feel like I was going anywhere personally, mm. internally. So I went to tax office, tried something different. There was an in, in, introverted system there. Mm. Man, I cried for that first year. I'm in it, I'm in, I, I do cry people. And, um, oh, it was tough, but I loved every moment of the tax experience. So what were you doing, investigation? Oh, so I started out as a, um, a graduate, so I um, was in litigation, yeah. and I was in high wealth individuals, people who, ha I had to assess people who had $30 million in assets and more. Yeah, all right. Um, um, then, but because of the litigation experience, they felt I was better suited to serious non-compliance. So we're dealing with ta bad tax fraud here, yeah. um, international money laundering, you name it, really big, big stuff. Jesus. So my first ever venture into tax was in the um, Project Wickenby team. It was a task force for all government in international money laundering. Yeah, they were shutting down <laughs> fake banks, this type of thing. I got that on my resume, man. You know Jesus. Like, yeah, that's you know, huge, eh? And then um, I really, you know, this is where it was still an intelligence type of position, but they felt I was better to all types of intelligence where it's also bringing the criminal aspect because mm. that was part of my justice degree. I did some yeah, electives yeah. on that. And 
one of them was also in my intelligence degree. And they go, oh, this guy needs to be intelligent. So I ended up becoming an intelligence officer two, three years. And Crazy. Bloody deadly at it, you know? Yeah. And um, then a lot of international money laundering stuff was involved in that process. Like, man, and you're checking, I'll check you, checking this. I had so many powers. I could look into your into your business finances. I could look into your mobile phone. I could pick that up, get your number, bang, find out who you talk to. Shit. Um, <laughs> I'll have their IP for your their, your, yeah. your your internet, you know? Far out. Um, I know how many houses you've owned or if you never own a house where you're renting right now, where, what your movements were. So, so. <laughs> it was all that and it was like putting that together. And then all of a sudden it's like, I didn't want to do it anymore, mm. you know? Um, I felt I was starting to feel like I was invading people's privacy or, you know, is that yeah. part of you that, uh, that there was an Aboriginal part of me that believed in a bit of security, you know, like yeah. a bit of yeah. protecting. I felt like I was big brother. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I didn't like that part to me. And so I moved to prosecutions. Yeah. And they started to move some of my <laughs> work back to me. In Within the taxation department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In the prosecutions. And yeah. he would have thought, he, he's a fellow now doing prosecutions. Like, <laughs> what the heck? What can't this fellow do? And then um, HR come knocking. <laughs> and they, wanted, they just built an Indigenous recruitment program. Yeah. And they wanted um, someone to go around the country recruiting for the tax office. And they thought, who, no, who better than yeah. to have a guy who's got a wealth of government experience? Yeah. Loves his job. Mm. Everything I did, I've loved. You know, mm. they had tough environments too, mm. and um, and you have to be good at it. But you got to learn to have a sense of humour too. At yeah. first, you know, these intrapoda people didn't like you because you had a sense of humour. Yeah, but it actually helped teams. Yeah, wherever we went, people wanted to come to our team. Yeah, because we were happy and having a bit of fun. Having a bit of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of like we were never depressed like the other teams within tax. It's mm. sort of like. It's a tough, it's a tough place, a tough gig because everybody really attacks, attacks, attacks mm. on the spot. Mm. They got to realise what pays for the hospital, what pays for the roads. Yeah, I mean it's a necessary evil. It's, it's a necessary evil. Yeah, and so um, I loved it. it. So I thrived on it. it. It was hard. It was, it was difficult dealing with the public, mm. but it enabled you to look past it and go well. They're only fighting for a certain issue. Mm. So you start to bring in the psychologists to talk to your teams and stuff. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you, you grow. So our, our teams always grew mm. and they were always happy. I believed in that. But then, the yeah, HR and said, who better? Yeah. So they set me out recruiting. and To uh, try and get Aboriginal applicants. Yeah. Yeah. And so I would talk about my experiences being a, from customs, I uh, being a government officer. Mm. Um had, they'd have some setbacks talking about that because they all wanted to work where you're working. <laughs> 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 but there were some some places where we didn't think we'd get one one candidate right for a job. We got fifteen for a place where we thought there was you know how you were going to pick the black face, you know. Yeah, yeah. For here on the sunny case, it was sort of like we went to places like that. There was one down in um, south of Melbourne somewhere. Went there and. It was like you couldn't have seen an Aboriginal face, but yeah, 15 stepped mm. out. Mm. And then I think end up being 20 overall candidates for this, yeah. for 10 jobs. Yeah. Yeah, it's like. And did you create the the recruitment program yourself, or they just got you to go? Right? I was part of the recruitment program, so. Yeah. Yeah, we've got help design it and everything. So yeah, that's good. Because being on, you know, grad program and uh, cadetship program, are you more about these type of programs that we're trying to create? So that's why they brought me in. Mm. And plus having all that experience, so I became the recruiter, the mentor, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like the coordinator. And is that <coughs> is that what you're doing now you, you, with youth? Not, um, not, so you left the tax department, mm, right? Mm-hmm. And you're doing that now, you're mentoring youth, is that right? Yeah, some some of them are, yeah. So the eldest candidate would be about 21, yeah. trainee, and the youngest tra- two, youngest two trainees are 17. Yeah. So they're between that age bracket. So quite, they're not difficult kids, they're actually good kids. So yeah. They do anything they ask for you. Know, one's now an international artist, you yeah. know, so amazing. It's all right. They, I feel more empowered by them because they know what they want. Yeah. Yeah, they might have issues. Yeah, you know, but who doesn't? But the thing, if you can uh, empower them 
to become something they never thought they'd dream to be. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that you've got a hand in there and you know that they've got good role models and other mentors around them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, this is a breeze. Yeah. Compared to what I had to do in tax office, you know. So you're just passing on your knowledge and confidence, I guess. Yeah. Most, most people think mentoring is, oh, think it's cultural. Yeah, I'd, I'd take them to show some cultural significant areas, but that's not what mentoring is about. Mentoring is about where you want to be in life. Yeah. And, or where do you want, you know, like most people go, oh, I want to be a famous rugby league player. Mm. Hold on, let's rephrase this again. What do you like? What are you good at in case football doesn't work? Yeah. Oh, I like this. And then so you start showing them their skills where they can get to achieve that dream. Yeah. So it's about transitioning them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And lateral skills. Yeah. yeah. Then you go, I'll see this here. You could go here to work. So I take them to the airport, I take them to uni, I take them to all these people who do these type of, well, where work and flow went from. Mm. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like young Aboriginal people today don't believe that those options are out there for them? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, they don't. And so when somebody like me comes along and starts showing this, I say, look, I, I don't t tell the kids this, but I tell the people that I'm talking to, I said, what these kids need is positive affirmation. Yeah. So when, when you're saying, yes, you can do this, you can do this, and you're lifting them up and you're empowering them, they become better. Yeah. They will turn up to work more. Yeah. They smile more, you know. They become happier more. Yeah. It, it's not about me, it's about them, you know. And then they, that, that's a ripple effect. Yeah, As yeah. well than other people seeing... Yeah. Breaking stigmas, mm -hmm. you know. And, but my group, the Kabi Kabi, think it's about cultural, you know, the cultural heritage. That's not a major mm -hmm. thing within this component. Yes, we should be empowering kids and educating them about the culture. But first, empower about them, about these kids, about themselves. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point, mate. Yeah, you know. And because they get health and well-being through my mentoring, they get, they do get touch on culture but how do they protect the culture is how i focus on the yeah. on the training yeah and also just about them just let them talk yeah and then the only way to get to someone is let them talk and then all of a sudden you devise plans and strategies of how you're going to move forward to take these kids to where they need to get yeah i guess it's like any 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 person aboriginal or not if they're young and they're confused and, and there's you're just looking around, there's nothing. Hmm. You know, if, you, if you're there, hmm. you know. I, I, I want them to be independent, though. No, I'm not their father. Yeah, their yeah. Father. And I don't want them to be dependent on me. That yeah. That's the hard part. Most people forget this. Mm. And you've got to remind yourself, you know, there's a, there's a line, you know, and you've got to push these kids to get to that independence. Yeah, yeah. And to see them thrive, sometimes they might grow up with... And be totally different to the person you you because of the career that they chose on. Yeah. You know? But but that's good. That's good that's, thing. That's what you want. Yeah. yeah. But they yeah. did it independently and made a choice. My first ever mentor now works for the defence department yeah. in um, Canberra. Crazy. Amazing girl. You know, like she tried to get me to come down and meet her recently in Brisbane with all our senior directors of tax office, but because she followed me from customs into tax and now she's down there high up doing HR recruitment. Yeah. Yeah, shit. so <laughs> it's about, you know, some people don't have a dream, but you give them your dream. Mm, yeah. So. And then it, it's like pushing about the nest, I guess. Mm. You know, it's time to fly. Oi, fly. Fly, yeah, yeah. Because you know, we, we don't raise our kids for ourselves. We raise them for their own, uh, you know, their yeah. own lives. Yeah, it's a funny one. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a father and, you know, I, uh, I, got, I got a phone call from my daughter last night. I won't disclose what it's about, but I'm like, you know, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do here? Do you want me to come down and sort it out? Do you want to handle it yourself? And it was good to hear her resilience go, no, I got it, Dad. I, I got it. Yeah. You know, I would have got on a plane, bang, straight away, gone down there if they fucking let me cross the border. But yeah. <laughs> Your father's here, man. <laughs> I'm here. What's yeah. going on, man? Yeah. So you've done a fair bit, mate. You, you're busy and, you, and you're doing that. Now, at the end of the show, we might give it a bit of a plug so any young people listening can um, uh, get in contact with you and, and yeah. learn a bit more about your yeah, program. So uh, I'm a native title applicant. 
a bit about what I do. Like Native Title Outland, so we meet various departments, government departments, also private sector. We also meet a lot of ministers and, I don't know, everybody's the same. Mm. And um, <laughs> <laughs> there, there's been some lovely, um, Sandy Bolton's a lovely Noosa MP, Leon Enoch, lovely um, Labor Party uh, minister, you know, starting to get to know the Greens lady, Amy McMahon. Mm. I think a bit of education there about um, Aboriginal politics might mm. help her. Um, but you meet them all and you, you've got to be Switzerland, you know, you yeah. can't, can't be... Yeah. You, and you've got to learn to turn your, your values off when you're meeting these people because at the end of the day, my mum said, it's you never know when you need a friend. Yeah. And so you've got to think of everybody as your friend. That's good advice. Is politics... In your sights? No, no. A lot of people want me to go to politics, yeah. but I don't know. Uh, it, it's you got to lie too much. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm too honest, you know. <laughs> but I think um, people think I'm good for it because I've helped create the Indigenous Regional Tourism Committee with Sunshine Coast Tourism. Yeah. Well, I'm sitting on South East Queensland... Um, Tourism committee with all the other traditional owner groups around South East Queensland. Yes, see. About to help create the koala strategy, South East Queensland committee. What's that for? To pr for protection of koalas? For protection of koalas for yeah. every traditional owner group. Yeah, nice. In South East Queensland, I'll be invited to that. Fucking hell, oh, you're busy, mate. How'd you find time to come in here today? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's Saturday. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, just, just things like that. I'm also the project officer of tourism for Carby Carby. Yeah. Have you got an ad coming out or something like that? Yeah, we do. Tourism um, ad? Yeah, so I created one with my son, and then I've got yeah. Kerry Jones also made a title up. We can create one with his daughter. Yeah. Because I wanted to create an emotional tourism ad. Yeah. Because I feel... Because it's not all about the big pineapple and fucking surfing. No, I, I just feel... With the way, you know, since the Lara Bingle, you know, they wanted, yeah. they spent yeah. millions on the ad yeah. and they've never quite got it right. Yeah, true. And I've been trying to harp on, it's like, you need to make it emotional, you need to make it about your future. And if you're going to do these things, you always need a fire, but that hasn't been in my ad. But I think if they go big, right? I've just been trying to change the mentality of how they look at ads and it needs to be focused on Aboriginal people and culture mm. Mm. or on the community. So we're emotive people. Make these emotive, then that this is what people from overseas want to see. Mm -hmm. And then we change the domestic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Has it run yet, the ad? Yeah, the two ads, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I haven't seen it. Yeah, I'll have to show you after. Yeah. Yeah. And we also did a um, social media ad with... These are all on social media, by the way. Not okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Different way to run ads these days. Though. Yeah, I don't yeah. go on Facebook anymore. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, and we did a social media video with um, tourism department called yeah. the Kalula Great Wall with Cabin. They're an Adelaide group. Yeah, who, right. Who won the successful? Who are the successful tenderers or proponents for the Kalula Great Wall? They're building the cabins. Yeah, nice. And hence their name, Cabin. Yeah, lovely bloke, Michael. Yeah, I think he's a major Adelaide Crow supporter. <laughs> so I met a few. Oh man, he has a few ex AFL footballers. Part of his squad yeah. working there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's part of his last tender. He had that Trevor Hendy, he's a oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A, let's see, Iron Man, or yeah, yeah, like yeah. Life's not a life, so but Iron Man, whatever they yeah, call it. Yeah. And who you mentioned that McLeod fellow, right? Winning yeah. the North Norm Smith medal, yeah, yeah, for those two grand finals they yeah. won. Who was the cool captain? Great Walk, Bickley, Mark Bickley. That could be him. Yeah, Mark Bickley was the captain. Mm. Yeah, Buck Bickley That's became dual premiership. <laughs> yeah, but he owns a business with Trevor Handy called Salt. <laughs> that guy but now. I got to meet them at this thing, and everybody comes up to me in the room, hugging me. Yeah. And Trevor Handy goes, I want one of those too. They build a health and well-being program, and it's a very amazing program. That's going to be part Cabin's, of the, um, Cabin's um, products too. Through the cool of great walk. Yeah, I can edit that out, but <laughs> some parts of that could be alright. But that that was amazing having Adelaide uh, team 
or Adelaide based company didn't mm. call the Great Wall. And Sandy Bolton, the Noosa MP, asked me, why did you choose Cabin? When they had three great cabin makers on the sunny coast, I said, had nothing to do about the cabin makers. It, it had to have to do with who was the tourism operator. Mm. And she goes, yeah, but tourism Noosa was the other, you know, candidate for the walk. And I said, uh, um, not always... Those closest home are your best asset. You yeah, know? true. Sometimes we've got to bring in outside talent. It's always the way. That, that's why you recruit, isn't it? Yeah. I was a recruiter, remember? <laughs> you know, and she <laughs> goes, oh, you got me there on that one. Yeah. I said, you know, because we focus too much internally mm. on the sunny coast and Noosa. Yeah. We have a, I understand with the councils, they have this um, theory or this um, policy that we recruit locally, you know? Mm. But sometimes when you lived here a long time, you watched neglect or corruption or, you know, mm. part of customs, you couldn't stay in the, one, the job for too long if you're there for more than three years because it was, had this understanding that it might create yeah. these order. Yeah. And so I don't think anybody understands my background mm. and where I'm pushing. So I'm thinking somebody, you, Bright, you, you know, you ideas might come to light. Mm. Was the best person for the job, really. There's the light stick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now you can see what I look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn it back on. Turn no, it no back on. Do you want them off? <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, 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 I'm joking. No, leave it on. Leave it on. <coughs> um, all right. Yeah, so that's, that's interesting. I've got a mate down in Adelaide. He's an artist, uh, Aboriginal fella. And um, kind of like yourself. He's not old enough to be an older, but an elder, but he will be. You know, he's, he's like a... He does a lot of fantastic work. I don't think work. I'll be an <laughs> <laughs> and what he's he's just teed up with someone and they go around to all the playgrounds, the kids' playgrounds down there in Adelaide now, and he's they have to consult him before they build a playground and there has oh. to be a certain amount of component of wood used instead of plastic and metal. So he goes and he cuts out like the Ghana um, shields and he has shields incorporated into it. Um, he uses a chainsaw and, and um, carves like canoes and stuff like that so when the kids are there playing they're touching wood instead of metal you know they're they're, they're um using natural natural products and uh, recycled things and there's a ghana elements to the playground now mm. so <clears throat> and he's just got psh, like the whole of south australia he's like you want to build a playground now so if you knock it down an old playground you want to build it you've got to speak to him so he's oh, laughing. Wow. Yeah, he's, he, he did the Crows Guernsey as well. Alan Sumner, his name is. Okay, Lance, but he's a landscape architect, isn't he? Well, he's a, just an artist, but he's just good with the chainsaw. Okay. <laughs> but wow. he did the Crows Guernsey for one year. And, yeah, he's he's amazing dude. Amazing Not bloke. Talent. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you him after. All right, we'll move on. There's a few things That's I want to... like an essence, <coughs> you know, like, you know, with the landscape. So he's using the essence of the landscape. Yeah, the well, he's big. Come back out. Yeah, he's big on like utilizing the land. It's true. There's too much plastic and metal on kids' playgrounds anyway. Mm. Even that park where I met you, like that's designed on the oyster nets. And yeah. my, my son said the other day, he goes, "Dad, did you notice that the sails are the Aboriginal flag?" I'm like, "Fuck, no, I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> I'd yeah, never yeah. even seen that." Yeah, yeah. Nulla park there, yeah. yeah, so he's he's good. We try and teach my son, you know. To have these conversations, he come home the other day. This is this is a good thing. I mean, it's not the best topic, but it's a good thing the schools are teaching it. But he come home the other day and said, "Dad, why did the white people be so mean to Aboriginal people?" And I'm like, "Okay, where's this coming from?" And they taught him at school. They're teaching him about you know the slaughterings and stolen generation. And I'm like, "Fuck, this is a conversation to have. Let's go." Mm -hmm. He's only eight, and he was really upset. I said, this is fantastic, because when I was in school, they were teaching us that this jolly fucking Captain Cook came in and yeah, yeah. what a good bloke he was, not, you know? So these conversations are starting to be had in the schools. and They had bound for what you made was a song or something. Yeah, well, they, so you probably would have been made to sing that. Yeah, back yeah. Back in yeah. the day, and you sing that fucking, <laughs> you know? They wonder why there's so much trauma. Yeah, I'm thinking of all the songs you were taught. Yeah, yeah interesting eh? really bad i'll just jump on to another question mate just for the non-aboriginal listeners right so 
<coughs> is I there spoken a bit. We haven't got down to agenda eight yet, have we? You know, like Jacob. No, we'll talk. That's what you wanted to talk about. One no, of I went to this meeting right there was elders, and I put something on that agenda fourteen to talk about how they can use some of this money to go back into creating um, a traineeship program or something. Mm. But it started at eight thirty. By three thirty in the afternoon, we're still on agenda two. <laughs> and I'm just a young fellow, and all my elders around me. I picked up the pen and threw the pen into the table, into the pan, and said, I had a fuck enough of all this. And I was like, Man, I was going up. I was swearing badly. And they're all staring at me. And I realised, oh, big shame, right? Uh, young person talking like that in front of your elders. I said, excuse me, I'm leaving the room. I'm so sorry. <laughs> when I had like 10 cigarettes, felt like, because I was a heavy smoker. And I'm there with my nephew, and I'm watching him bang. He goes, yeah, stuff them, uncle, stuff them. <laughs> you know, like, I go, yeah, knock off. So, um, I did the wrong thing. He goes, no, nah, I'm on your side. <laughs> and um, he was only like five years old. Because <laughs> his granny, my auntie, brought him to, the, um, to, to this um, meeting. I walked back in to apologise to all the elders. And they go, no, no, it's all right, boy. By this time, they've moved on to Agenda 5. Oh, they got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, nah, you're right, you're right, man, boy, you're right. Come and sit back down. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. I'm the first young, per per young person to ever get away with that. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're on agenda. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. That's sort of like <clears throat> nothing ever felt like it moved, yeah, you know, nah. back in those days. So it's not yeah, you know, pushing shit up a hill, eh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so what what I've got here, is, this is a pretty broad one, and it's kind of for non-Aboriginal list, you know, audience members and that. So I just wanted to ask you, what is one thing about Aboriginal culture that non-Aboriginal people can't understand? Um, do you, do you, can you put your finger on one? Like I've got here as an example, like connection to country. <laughs> is there one thing that you think white fellas don't get I, I just think they don't get it it's sort of like we have the saying when we're with each other um, and so we'll say he gets it she gets it he don't get it you know yeah and for ourselves it's sort of like how do you talk about everything that's affected our people and our culture for over two centuries, mm. and how do you explain that in five minutes yeah. to somebody when you're going with something? So it takes a lot of negotiations. Yeah. And you think by the fifth or sixth negotiation, your person you're negotiating with is taking everything that you're saying in and using those words to turn it around and help you? No. No. That's when you go, no, they don't get it. Mm. They're still stuck on trying to figure us black people out. Yeah. We've told, you know, we should be leading them on a story, a journey of their discovery. Yeah. You know, to grow up our way, it's sort of, is based on resilience. It's like most of our people are educated in the colonial sense, you know, the, yeah. the white man's way. Yeah. But our people are very educated in, they know how to get a result. Mm. You know, if their child's sick or, you know, I burnt my finger as a kid. My mum never took me to a doctor. She took me to an old lady. Mm. She go, nah, the skin will grow back. Or the, you know, the, mm. every, the marrow and everything will grow back around the bone. Don't get it cut off. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's sort of like, we just have a way of finding finding out things without going directly to them, people who have the knowledge. But if we know our child's really sick, and the reason why we don't want to child, take our child to the doctor, because in the past, our, we used to take someone to the doctor, our kid would never come back to yeah. us and stole it. Yeah. It's all those type of things that yeah. plays out in us today, and it's all like we don't have a deep trust of government. Yeah, definitely, mm. definitely. But with me being in out of hospital, I sort of like, <laughs> yeah, my kid's going to hospital, you know, I've got to look past all those past resentments and because yeah. my mum used to have that fear and so like then rationalise some of their fears with today's yeah. society. Yeah, some people have moved <coughs> forward. 
But they're real fears. Mm. I, I worked in an Aboriginal organisation down in South Australia, and they won't go and they won't go and get help for that reason for domestic violence. They won't they won't speak up because they don't want their men to go to prison. They don't want their kids taken, and it, it's 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 a very real fucking fear. It's a fear. It's and still happening. At, it's happening at a higher rate today mm. than it did back in the day. Um, and the thing is, I think we're contributing it to because we're getting involved. We're using these token roles or whatever it is. You know, like, don't get me wrong. It, <laughs> they're there. Mm. It's sort of like, because oh, you build, I don't know. I, oh, I'm frustrated. Mm. Let me put it that way. Okay, let me break it back a bit. Then when, when I grew up, everybody, every Aboriginal person helped every Aboriginal person. Now you've got Native title. Now you got these ones who have an investment in some of these programs you just mentioned, you mm. know, like domestic violence or something. But they're so busy on keeping their business afloat yeah. and getting the next funding so they can have an extra employee because they might got a mate, another Aboriginal mate doing the same thing. They've got one or two more po- employees than you. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, yeah. I'll go fuck yourselves. Yeah. I didn't sign up to your business so that you can have an extra boy. I, I signed up because I wanted you to do your freaking job. Yeah. That say their jobs aren't focused on their jobs. Yeah. You know, like youth justice and that. There's some good organisations. I'm not knocking them. I'm just talking in general and what I'm seeing. And what I'd like to see is all these community centres take the forefront of, take it back because that's where the real assistance will come from for our people. Mm. And, yeah, I don't know. Lesson learnt was with that um, solar person. What's you know, they create that car. What's that, Vesta or something? I forget. The what? You know, there's a car based on electricity or super oh, solar electricity or not something. Not Tesla. Tesla, that's yeah, it. Tesla. Yeah, fucking Elon Musk. Yeah, him. Yeah. He, he, he's the one who goes, you know, Africa, some country in Africa asks for money and... He said, no, bugger that, I'm not giving that money because that's going to get stuck in one of them services and it will never get down to mm, the people, to the who, people. who yeah. needs this electricity. He went and built that solar farm mm. himself using mm. his own capital and now that country has electricity yeah. like going back to the government. That's the type of service I want I see out there. Yeah. I want I see our money, our investments going to the people who are actually doing the job. I don't want to go into these services where they get stuck. Yeah, for sure. Because they create, you know, I don't know, these positions or policy or, oh, I guess mm. I was the minister today. Who yeah. gives a fuck about that too? So, yeah. like, do the job you're paid for, dude. Yeah. Look after your people. <clears throat> I kind of, I, I, to summarise, I, it's the same as, like, in Adelaide, there used to be a homeless shelter, right? Mm-hmm. So I would take, you know, when you take a bag of clothes to the op shop, people take to the op shop, you think you're doing the right thing. You're not. You just, they, so the clothes go there, they get sold, they pay for the diesel and trucks, this and the other, and then the money trickles out down here. Mm-hmm. I used to go straight to the homeless shelter. Here, guys, I've got a few bags of clothes. Mm-hmm. It's winter, do you want some clothes? Oh, beauty, yeah, this fits, this fits, boom, they've got it. So you're cutting through the middleman. You, you want that middleman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to come mm. straight to the to mm. the people who are being affected, and I've noticed that with these community centres lately, that they, they actually happen directly, mm. and I think that's where the assistant needs to go. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's sort of like local governments think it's their job to take care of the homeless. Yeah, the flat are taking care of a park. Mm. Well, why do they think they're taking care of the homeless? Give it the job to somebody who wants to do the job and will do the job. Mm. Buy the facility, you know, fund it, mm. and then let it take care of itself. Let the people come in and do the job. It's yeah. not your responsibility. You know, let yeah. p- community <coughs> take care of, care of community. Yeah, that's where your local this local government's moving away from the agenda it's supposed to have. Yeah, right. It's about you know it's supposed to be about the community. That's what local governments are for. They're not about state or federal level, <laughs> you no. know, of creating these big mega casinos that they want or whatever. It's all, I don't know. There's none of that here, but yeah. it's. I just talking it because I'm annoyed. I'm frustrated, yeah. and I just want to see some sort of help go to our local people. <laughs> Maybe you do need to go into politics. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 try to get away yeah. from it. 
right? But oh, I'm so passionate because that's what Native Title did. When I first came in, I was non-committal for the first three, four months because you're trying to figure it out. And, mm. and then you get the kick in the ass from your elders and go, no, we put you there for one reason. It's one not reason. a paid role either, is it? No. No. They go, we put you there for a reason. And that was, was to help the people. Yeah. And so I've got to do that helping my people um, by why should these politicians get so much money yeah it is and they're not helping man. their people yeah and you're out here doing it for the for the love and yeah or obligation to your elders as well yeah Fuck, yeah i know so it's a topsy-turvy yeah yeah topsy-turvy system mate it's funny like i probably get in politics and get paid and i don't have no feeling for the job you yeah. know what I'm like? yeah <laughs> yeah well, that's right <laughs> yeah yeah but it's i just want to I don't know where who's who owns the bucks, and we need to find mm. out who owns the bucks so they don't pass the buck. Mm. Homelessness belongs to local governments, mm. and they pass it up to state government, saying, "Oh, because of their legislation or whatever." Yeah. yeah. Now put it on yourselves. Be responsible. Take ownership. Move on, and get people in who wants to assist. Yeah. Because where is all that money going, mate? Mm -hmm. You know? Like Jesus. that bushfire money, you know? Yeah. Didn't they raise 21 million? Did that yeah. get to all them people? Nah, there was a lot of lot of talk around that and where that was going. And mm. That's a prime example. Yeah, that's um, crazy. You know? Everybody attacking the prime minister. I don't know nothing about this prime minister. I don't follow federal politics. Um, has no um, big stake in our, our game, you know? Like in Kabi at the moment, it's mainly state and yeah. local. Yeah. One day there might be that federal, um, because Native Title is a federal legislation. Yeah. And, you know, it was put John Howard, he, he had a lot of tack on Native Title back in the time. Yeah. There would be a lot of focus, on energy focused on yeah. federal. But they're kind of leaving us alone. And I think they're focusing on a tribal council. That mm. means like 35 regions throughout Australia. Mm. Tribal council might help. They might get rid of the ownership, possessive nature that traditional owners have of country because we've got a lot of non-traditional owners living on our country at the moment and they want to invest in, in some sort of culture. So as long as we're recognised as the cultural people of this place, everybody can work together, can't they? Yeah, yeah. Man, it's, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a tangled web, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just, just think I'm, like, I'm laying a lot of questions down on questions I don't know or answers on, on top of you know no but it's good if, if, if anything comes out of this people should go and get online and investigate themselves and mm -hmm. see see what they can do what do you think as what what do you as far as being in being an Australian right mm -hmm. there's a lot of wrongs a lot a lot of wrong unspeakable wrongs that have been done to your people right mm -hmm. what do you think and you know I'm gonna I'm gonna say this you you would hear it casual racism you hear this I didn't do it. Why? Is it? It's not my fault. I'm only in my twenties. I'm white. I'm in my twenties. I didn't do it. Rah rah. But there's still that's still part of the problem. Having having that attitude. What can young white Australians do to help mend what has happened over the last 250 years? I don't know. There's not much because it hasn't changed since I was a kid. Mm. I think a strategy needs to be come up with. And it needs to be led by an Aboriginal person. Mm -hmm. So I think there needs to be tourism products. I love tourism, right? Yeah. But they're educational tourism products. We should be taking them to places such as Lowe. It should be us taking them to Gallipoli, an Aboriginal person taking them away, or not even Gallipoli. There's a place in Belgium called Hill 62. And not far from Hill 62 is Tynecott Cemetery. But how Hill 62 shows the bunkers. Yeah where the troops used to run through yeah. and there's still bullet holes in these yeah. in the metal there and so it's still as they preserved it mm -hmm. from the war and then they show you photos of a landscape where bombs down and there was holes there and crazy you're going past farms now that didn't all look like the landscape was destruct destroyed yeah. you know the trees were missing you know yeah. if they've replenished it re regrow <laughs> they should go to tynecote cemetery which isn't far away and they'll see all the allied troops that are dead you know, like who died to fight to preserve, you know, our lives today, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, you know, the saying. Yeah. Um, but at this, at this cemetery, there's a bunker, like a 
no, so what do you call them? Tank trenches. Trenches. Yeah, trenches yeah. Yeah, L62. But this was a bunker, a German bunker. And there was like, let's carve them down the Allies. But this Australian troop come out of nowhere, saved the day, you know, like, oh my God, an Aussie, you know. But have it told by an Aboriginal person. Yeah. And say, you know, see this? This is what happened to us. Yeah. Back in our country. Yeah. We, but we have our love for Australia and we're trying to move past those barriers that you have for us. Yeah. But look what can happen when you have a war. Yeah. So see the damage that it does? Yeah. And then you take them a into... Good, that's a really good outlook. That's, yeah, yeah, that's very smart. Yeah. Then you take them into IPA and then at 8 o'clock every night they play the last post in honour of Australian people mm. because they remember the Australians fondly. Mm. Now this is a... Foreign country, mm. Belgium we're talking about. Christ Almighty. And we can't even respect our own veterans in our own country. Yeah. But going back to the, the, the question, so with Tourism Noosa created this visual display. So it's got Lyndon Davis, local traditional owner, very known here in South East Queensland. Got him to do a welcome to country with um, his daughter and two nieces. Yeah. It's a visual display that will be displayed at 8, 8 p.m. No, hold on. 7 p.m. every night. Um, up at Hastings Street in Noosa. So yeah. People can come down and see this welcome country. Oh, that's cool. for about six or seven minutes. Yeah. But that's in honour of the Carby Carb people. And part of the storytelling, I wanted more females to be part of that story because females have a very important part to play in our mm. culture and our lives. Mm. And also, one of those a commemoration or honour, sort of like, we were the people removed. We were the ones in the frontier wars. This is our space. This is our time. Invest in us. Yep. And so, same thing, like that men and gate, but us telling the story, and we can interchange the stories. Mm. We can take them here, take them there, but... We'll get the real version. Get the real version. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like your son, grows up, and there's respect. We are we our culture is based on or the way we're raised is based on respect. Yeah, for sure. And then if we base everything on respect, we might see a change in this country and you know, there'll be more people who are more patriotic than nationalists. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. I think it's happening. I think you know, my my parents were racist. Like the things they said about Aboriginal people would just for see not not to not horrible put downs and conversations but the words used yeah, were yeah. horrible yeah. so you know I, i've said it on the podcast before i was quickly taught by aboriginal friends not to say those words but i didn't know they were wrong words i just said them cop the hiding was educated and never used them again yeah yeah so my son now i teach him not to it's say that word aboriginal person so i wouldn't even describe you if i wouldn't say mm. the guy with the black skin over there i'd say the guy with the that colour jumper or yeah. the guy with the headphones on. Go and see that guy over there. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even say, you know, like it's, and it's very hard because Americans, they say the black guy, the black oh, guy, the black guy, you oh, know. Sorry, cut that part. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I don't say to him, my son will go, what's that guy doing on the TV? And I'll say, what, the one with the red jumper mm -hmm. or the guy in front? I try not to, to use that as a descriptive word. And then he's going to teach his kids that. Yes. And then he's, so maybe, maybe the ball is rolling. But, yeah. but like you said, it's 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 going to be a slow process. Cause nothing's changed since you were a kid. Oh, I feel like nothing's changed. Because mm. I remember I was talking to somebody this morning. I was talking to a friend this morning. And um, a good friend of mine. And um, I was explaining that from grade two to grade five, I fought every kid in my yeah. grade yeah. and everybody in the grade above me. And then by the time I was in grade five, I was fighting the grade sevenists. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, they used to call me Bungo Coon and I, I never lost a fight, right? And um, and I got tired of fighting mm. because if I got home, I would have got a flogging off my father yeah. if he found out they called me Coon and Bull. Yeah. So what, because you didn't re re retaliate? Yeah. Yeah. And so to me, and I was going, I was trying to explain who I am, why I am who I am today. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like I've seen that as activism. So when I see people fight, Th that way we're using our activists and mm -hmm. so i had to learn to overcome my dad's teachings in order to find a different way in order to penetrate 
the, the colonial system, that, you yeah. know, we call it the colonial system, yeah. to penetrate. So we're using all their knowledge, all their laws, all their policy to filter back in yeah. without yeah. becoming the activist, but it's teaching yeah. what that people refuse to listen to. Yeah. Hey, this actually happened to us. Yeah. Because you know, if you come in aggressive, they're not going to listen. No, they're not, yeah. not going to even be at the table with you. Yeah. But if you do it nicely, you do it with a smile on your face, yeah. Mm. Yeah. You don't act like a fool, but you tell the odd jokes, you know. Yeah. And they love it. They just feel like <laughs> yeah, they're immersing themselves in you and yeah. or the people around you. They seem to, uh, it's not a, I don't know what the right word is, but integrate with you. Yeah, yeah. So they're integrating more with you than you with them. Yeah. It's just changing. You know, it's about personality. Yeah. I've had a lot of senior leaders now that um, from government sectors sit with me on a lot of things and then go, it's your behaviour voice is the reason why people want to make changes and do things. Because yeah. you're so energetic and yeah. bubbly and you're just like, we can do this. Infectious. Yeah, yeah it's got to be It's got to be that. Yeah. Because if it's not, people are not going to jump behind you or jump behind your group or your chair. Because I'm not the chair, I'm the secretary. So okay. we've got different leaders for different outcomes. Yeah. But you need it. You really need... I, d I just feel that personality really penetrates longer, deeper, mm. harder. Mm. Yeah. You've got to make sure that you're always following through too. You know, you just don't walk away and go, ah, oh, creators, yeah, they're good, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, as you know, <coughs> things can be overturned and got to make sure that it, there's a locked in, there's a clause. There's do you feel it. like you're ever dumbing yourself, your, not yourself, do you feel like you're ever playing things down to fit into white men's world in this space that you're working? No. No. Good. I, um, at first I thought that. And then... No, I base it on every moment of my life, right? It's the aggressiveness. I just felt, oh, jeez, I'm tired of being punched. And yeah. I can punch back. No, I felt I created more fear in the punch. Yeah. And yeah. then people didn't want to talk to you. Yeah. And so I think I deleted that out of my game when I was 15 or something. Cause mm. I, but then, you know, becoming a customs officer. Mm. There's only two of you. <laughs> What's in your fucking bag? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> becoming a customs officer, right? There's only two of you on a vessel with 50 na different nationalities at any different time. Mm. And I'd go on board about six or seven a day. Mm. So we're dealing with, <sighs> could be up to 400 different people. Mm. It could be Indian people, Filipino people. But there was always 50 there. There mm. was two of you. Yeah. And it was your voice that held the day. Yeah. It wasn't... We yeah. carried no weapons. We didn't need firearms. Yeah. Oh, look, we got a pen. We're going to write that down. No, 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 don't write that against me. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But, no, we didn't do that either. It's, it was your voice yeah. and the way you carried yourself. Yeah, for sure, 100%. Mm, that's why when I look back now, it's all like, nah, I haven't, mm. haven't changed. I'm still the same person, getting the same result that anybody else would want to achieve, just doing it differently. Yeah, differently, yeah. And I'm doing it the way I know because I got sick of wallets. Yeah, no, it's good. It's mm. good. I I worked in youth work and same thing. You you see all these suits come in with their degrees and they they come in they're authoritarian and punitive and stuff like that. And these kids just don't want to have a bar of them. I walk in, hey gone, yeah. how are you? Almost almost dismissive, like hey gone, you come to me when you're ready. And they sort of see the cut of your jib, you know, and they're like they're intrigued. But if you come in. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. They're like, fuck you. You know, whereas you're like, hey, hey, you go. Um, then you win them over. Yeah. You know? so it's, it's all about your approach, I guess. Yeah. Um, my latest thing, one of the local high schools would reach out for me to mentor a young mm. Indigenous student. Yeah. Not Kabi Kabi, but Indigenous. And I've come in, um, young kids are very quiet. Yeah. But I've met him a couple of times now. Now we've started to open up. Yeah. And that's a good feeling. Yeah. When they start to open. But the... Deputy principal has said, like, he's um, improvement at school. He's starting to turn up on time. Yeah, he's awesome. We don't need to talk about discipline and measures anymore. Yeah, and so, but I was ill this particular day meeting him. And I said, look, because I've arranged for his time to match my time, he needs to take sick leave or two. 
<laughs> and the principal goes, goes, what? The deputy principal, I mean. And I said, no, 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 no. You don't get it. I arranged for him yeah. to be with spend with my time. I'm ill. I can't spend that time for him. I've arranged for him to have his time off. Yeah. He needs to have sick leave too. Yeah. And the young kid's going, yeah, yeah, I'm in yeah. the... <laughs> but she goes... I don't understand this. I said, no, no, you don't need to you understand. You don't have to. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. Or I'm informing you. It's yeah. not telling you. I'm informing you. This is this is this is appropriate mm. because he's supposed to match my mentoring hours, mm. and so I'm ill. He's ill. Yeah. So she so goes, I get it now. You know. Yeah. So yeah. It's, so it's an empowering the kid to understand that yeah. you've got a voice and you've got leverage and there's negotiation and everything to do. Yeah. I learnt working with uh, Aboriginal kids that they learn a different way and i got some friends and I'm looking into getting out there myself, going out to Alice Springs and doing some workshops with this podcasting and, and a bit of music. But I learnt that a lot of Aboriginal kids uh, learn differently. Mm -hmm. So I would go in and advocate for them in their schools. I'd say, you know what, they don't... They don't want to sit at their desk. That's fine. Mm. If they want to be on the ground, well, let them go outside. Let them sit in the dirt, right? right? They're still going to get the information. And this one girl, she would always take her shoes off in class. And they're like, you can't do that. I'm like, but, but she can. There's 40,000 years of wearing no fucking shoes. Yes, she can take her shoes off. And going in and advocating. And you know what? They implemented these strategies. Up goes her attendance. Up goes her grades. Everything. You yes. Know? So... Just understanding different, different methods. Work. methods. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because and he's a good kid. This John, I like him. Um, very good kid. Um, I think he's got bright future. Could yeah. be anything he wants to be. I'm trying to see if he can meet this uh, local because this is where my connections come in. My yeah. network. So you know, I don't want any kid I mentor. I don't want to be a labourer. I want them to get that out of their head. Yeah. I want them to know that if they're gonna have this mentoring with me. There's your networks and your connections, your community. Okay, let's go focus on one of the big community businesses that are in our community. Yeah. Let's go and approach on that school-based traineeship. For sure. Let them bang. All right, they're in. What's your next step? Where do you want to go to? Do you want to go into uni or do you want to go into work? Let's do this yeah. for you. Options. Yeah. Options. That's what you want to yeah. There's just a few that we'll, we'll knock through. And, um, and then I've got a signature question that I ask everyone and then we'll sort of pass on how people can get, how you, people who are interested can get in contact with you. So I was going to, I was going to talk on the change the date. What's your thoughts on change the date for January 26 real quickly? Well, do you think that's going to help? Change the date needs to change because, um, I don't know if you look at it, right? Um, Australia Day. Most people celebrate Australia Day on January 26th. I think that's Australia Day. Yeah. No, it's not. Federation of Australia was January the 1st, 1901. That's Australia Day. Mm. They just chose, to, you know. Yeah. But when they did Pride, you know, when the people were allowed to be, you know, marriage equality for yeah. loads of Pride, LGBTI community. Yeah, yeah. That, the funding they used for that was supposed to be for our constitution and for... And whenever that date occurred, was going to be the date for all of Australia. Never, mm. never eventuated, did it? Because uh, we did the you know, yeah. we couldn't reach a consensus. That's it. So, if majority of people were in favour of supporting Australia, you know, Aboriginals in the Constitution or a treaty or whatever, that will be the day for the change. Yeah, and that will be Australia Day. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what's your favourite thing about being Aboriginal? My favourite thing? Yeah. I'll tell you what, I, I, I try to run. <laughs> <laughs> and I, everything I've always told, you can't run away from being black. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, being Aboriginal, I just think being born, it, it's, uh, it's a blessing. Mm. Um, to know things or to learn things or to know why that, you know, like a tree to, mm. you know... Um, we could use this tree and this tree to create fire. Mm. Just knowing those things, mm. that's amazing. We, we, we got something to have many people. Yeah, if the world's energy sources were to be depleted, mm. they'd be definitely relying on us Aboriginals to yeah. bring them back out of it, you know? Yeah. Bring yeah. them back to the light. Yeah, well, even, <laughs> the, even the fire, that, that fellow who's like, you know, we, we, we've been telling you this for years. This fucking fire, bushfires are going to happen mm -hmm. if you listen to us. We'll tell you how to avoid it. Yeah. Victor Stephenson, great fireman. Um, 
he found this plant that so through fire, you know, like because he burnt the ground and the seeds would go yeah. on the ground and yeah. then was an extinct plant that came back to life. Yeah, the seeds just don't mean they disappear; they're in the ground. It just takes mm. fire to regenerate. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, what's it saying? Like a phoenix rise from yeah. the ashes, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well Australia's based on fire, isn't it? Really? Mm-hmm. You know, and your your mum have known that for a long time, <laughs> a long time. And I tried to tell people our trees are three times the height of what they were today, and they were bigger around us. Some trees were like twenty two meters long. Crazy the trees we see today are just not even the fabric of what we saplings. Once were. Yeah, <laughs> of once we once were. Yes. All right. So, who are your heroes? My mum. Mum, easy one. Mm-hmm. Easy one. Rest in peace to your mum. And my grandmother. And your grandmother. Okay. Beautiful. That's that's nice. Um, what do we got here? What advice do you have for young Aboriginal people who are confused about their place in society at the moment? Don't give up. Um, you know, just reach out. There's a guy that might be out there, might be creating a business for a mentoring program that <laughs> would be about positive <laughs> affirmation. <laughs> I wonder who that is. Yeah, well, I know, but <laughs> BWS, the real BWS. Yeah, the re- yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! All yeah. right, so we've talked about your role at the moment. Um, there's uh, just yeah, just quickly. So do you, I had this one here? We'll skip back, but we won't we won't deep dive into it. So I just want to know when was the last time that you encountered casual racism, and what was it, and how Ooh. do you how do you deal with it? I would, is that on a daily basis? Mm. Casual racism. Some people are too frightened, you know, mm. to even go that casual racism. I think probably about three years ago, maybe a council, a sunny coast council. You black fella just want more. And I went, what? Fucking hell. Why don't we have a fight right now? Here, I'm standing here. Oh, fuck off, you black fella. Yes, oh, Jesus. all right. Come on. Are we like, should we, should I rephrase this a bit? Nah, or nah, nah. Um, yeah, but in getting to know him and he's had, a, he's been humbled a bit, that council. We've become mates, you know. Yeah, right. You know. Through Did he com- apologise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, he goes, oh, there's a lot I'm learning and, you know, I've been taught a lot of ways, but your top follow don't give up, you yeah. know. And I go, yeah, yeah. That's the athlete in me because he yeah. was, yeah, part of his. Yeah, I won't, I won't go into detail. I don't want people to work out who this person is. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but we became friends, and um, yeah, but it was quite heated. Yeah. I thought we were going to go toe to toe, and the the media was there and everything. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> his boxing career is back. <laughs> like this guy's getting a flog, and I tell you. <laughs> I don't care who's there, and then you start thinking, oh, shit, he, he's a councillor, a politician, dude. Oh, police might arrest <laughs> me, not him, for his, uh, for his racist attitude. Yeah. You know, man. So, uh, right. and, but we had a chat about it. It wasn't protected, and it's like, I just think you need to learn. You know, like, we don't always want to hand out. Well, mm-hmm. what do you think that? I was telling you something that we needed a space in this environment, mm. and you took that the wrong way. Yeah. It's probably something he's been taught growing up, mm. you know. Yeah. That's yeah. a that's a misconception. That's you know. I remember I got Aboriginal mates in, back in South Australia, and we would do music together. And the, they made a song, a parody song about the forty grand in the bank. You know, and mm. peop, people think that Aboriginal people were given forty thousand dollars and given cheap electricity and cheap gas bills. It's like I had a free dog. Well, well, fucking prove it. Mm. Tell me. Show me, show me where this forty thousand dollars is. So they're like, "Yeah, forty k in the bank, like yeah, taking yeah, the piss." Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, we got everything free. Yeah, yeah, he's doing well now. This boat, <laughs> Adam Adam Briggs, he's <laughs> yeah, fucking him, yeah. kicking goals now. Mm. Um, so one more quickly, <clears throat> what? But, but what was that? What was that again? Just one second. What were we talking about then? About the the how you diffuse the casual racism. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With the with the guy. So we're good friends, right? Yeah, and um, but he got it. I I said, well, it shows. Okay, when you look at data and research data, it shows that when you invest in the Aboriginal people or the Torres Strait Islander people, your investment rises. Mm. We're talking like a three hundred percent. It mm. actually escalates. Mm. And he was going, "What?" And I'm going, "You're in a field where you should be investing in us 
Aboriginal people. This mm. is our country. Mm. We are better for this economy mm. than you realise. Yeah, yeah. And they don't have fucked me around. So give us a leg up, fuck you, yeah. not a handout. You know. Yeah, 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 you yeah, yeah, good. And you go, I like you. I yeah. like your attitude. It's yeah. you don't give up. <coughs> and I think it's good. That's like when I was saying as a kid, my my Aboriginal mate saying, "Bang, don't say that word." Mm. But but hey, say this word, mm. and we're cool. And that's why I've always found Aboriginal people to be quite forgiving mm. for white white fellas' um, naivety. Yeah. You know, only if you learn from it. If you're going to constantly be that dickhead saying the wrong thing, then I've seen I've seen my mates just go, "Well, fuck you." But it's not they don't say fuck you. They just fuck you with their actions. Turn around, never see that person again. And it's like, how come I don't see so and so anymore? Because he thinks you're a wanker. But he didn't tell me that. <laughs> His yeah. actions are telling you that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? we're, we're, we don't want to come out and get into verbal fights. Yeah. Um, one more, and then we're going to this signature question. So, there's um, what did I have it? What what what's the common stereotype about Aboriginal people that you think needs to be eradicated? Common stereotype. Hmm. Hmm, tough one, that one, eh? Because there's always every, I don't know, probably about a communication. Yeah, I don't know. Don't, some people don't think we're educated enough until you start sitting down with them, don't they? Yeah. Oh, you're educated. <laughs> you got two degrees. <laughs> <laughs> two degrees. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. You're like, yeah. I was like, why, why judge? You know, yeah. Just because I'm Aboriginal, like, and because when I communicate, I don't communicate with the big words. Yeah. Why do I need to use the big words? Because it's not those people that I'm around all the time. Yeah. It's the it's the downtrodden yeah. or the people who are fighting. Well, you speak to your demographic, don't you? Yeah. Mm. And if I start talking like that, they'll think I'm a punce. <laughs> you know. <It's> sort of <laughs> <laughs> well, young man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Why change our vocabulary with whoever we meet? You know, like, if yeah. it doesn't matter if it's the Premier, the Prime Minister, or the, you know, little baby that you're holding, yeah. nursing you up. You yeah, talk to everybody sure. the same, that they are. It's who you are. That's yeah. who people have their affinity with. Yeah. And if you change who you are for anyone, I should run for politics. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> I'll, I'll vote for you. Yeah, mate. yeah. <laughs> because it's who you are that, that people love. Yeah, and, true. Um, you change for someone, they go, you change. I don't like you. Mm. You're a wanker. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah you, it, be yourself. Yeah. Because it's the only way you can make change. For sure. Good advice. All right, mate. The last one is a signature question for, for the show that I ask every guest. Some people love it. Some people hate it. If you could send yourself back a fortune cookie... Back in time, and that fortune cookie had one little piece of advice in it. What advice would that be? Any age, any age, young Brian mm. Warner. Oh, um, don't change. Don't change. Yeah, don't don't change who you'll become. You know, like you're not going to win that footy career as you thought you were. You know, your life has turned out quite a blessing. Yeah, yeah, but or there was another one I was thinking about. It's sort of like, don't marry the woman you're about to marry <laughs> because she's the one who's going to force you into native title. <laughs> <laughs> it's just don't get married. <laughs> don't get married. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, she's not going to listen to this, is she? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that Brian Warner, I think, man. Um. <laughs> But you know, oh, fuck. no, that was a joke. But um, if I if I was serious, it'd be send back. Don't change who. You, don't don't change. Don't change the person you will become because you will joy every minute. Your love life. Yes, there's a lot of thousand struggles along the way. Mm. You'll go into deep regression and possible policy. You know, I mean, um, poverty. Mm. You will face poverty along the way. But yeah, it's um, you wouldn't have it any other way yeah. because. That will make you the person that you'll become, and yeah, you know, and you will make a difference, and um, and people will love that about you. Yeah, yeah. Wow. that's really really good advice. That's that's awesome advice. All right, mate. I'll, we'll we'll end it up there. Um, I got I do have here what's next for Brian Warner. 
Okay. But, but you're doing it, aren't you? you? You're doing what you're doing now for a while. I d- I got I have no idea. No. If, um, <laughs> if I get into politics, I get into politics. <laughs> if I don't, I don't. Well, you can give me a job then. I'll, yeah. I'll be your public liaison. Yeah, I need one of those. Um, I, I'm just thinking about it, Jay. It's sort of like, oh, Christ Almighty, do which whatever path that comes along. Yeah. It, what, I think I have better. I do better things for our people being on this side of the fence. Yeah. Because then I thought about this, sort of like if I was to go into politics, that means I'd have to be part of a party, then I've got to do yeah, the party get tick. Tired, yeah, man. then do the party tick. Oh, yeah. oh get, get away, you boring batshit yeah. people, you know? Yeah. You're not here for the people. What are you really here for? I don't know, but, you know. Anyway, yeah. I'm getting carried away there. Yeah. But then you start thinking, oh, no, I would be an independent then, like that Noosa lady. Yeah. But then, can we make any real changes apart from our community? You know, when yeah. you're, uh, I like think you're making change where you are, mate, mm. by um, empowering the youth and um, mm. doing what you're doing. All right, I just want to thank you for coming on, mate. It's uh, I think um, uh, Aboriginal people's stories are extremely important. It's part of your your culture is telling stories and passing down knowledge. Um, mm. So I really, really respect you taking the time out of your Saturday. Um, I really expect, respect you coming in. I uh, look forward to getting to know you better now mm. that now that we've met and um, seeing what we can do as far as connecting and, and working together. Um, anything else you want to say? Yeah, it's made <laughs> up work next week. Just, yes. Um, here, here in sun- Queensland, sunny coast, we've, um, yeah, um, COVID's kind of knocked back most of our NADOC events. And mm. Is that st- one still going on at the rugby club? No, m- most of them all have been... Oh, shit. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Cancelled. Cancelled, yeah. And so most owners stu- still go out and enjoy the week. Mm. And still know it is what it is to celebrate Aboriginal, you know, yeah. and Torres Strait Islanders' um, yeah. hi- history and values. Yeah. Still, still get out and participate. Meet up as a community. Do something. Buy yeah. a car and drink in the park like yeah. we used to, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. Get out there, meet an Aboriginal person, say hello to them, ask them questions because I think you're right. I think a lot of uh, people are scared to ask questions. Mm. And if you don't ask questions, you're never going to learn. Yep. You know, so, and it's, it is their country, it's important to them, and they can teach us things that we just don't know. There's a cultural difference, but that's not to say that we're apart. We can. We can come together and we can learn that. And go get online, look up what NADOC Week means, look up what what a- Aboriginal art, look up uh, Aboriginal locations, just get out there and be amongst it and um, celebrate the week, like Brian said. Or become innovative. Learn to become innovative. We get too focused on what we do. We make that, you know, that becomes our history. You know, like, ah, oh, that's my football team. You know, you, you become fanatics. Yeah. Get out of the fanatic thing and then become innovative and become new, fresh ideas. Yeah. Why not make it interactive online, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're going to create this event here like this, you yeah, know? Yeah, They managed to do it with musical festivals, yeah, and, yeah. you know, bringing talented artists from their homes. Yeah. Why don't we do it? Yeah. Why don't we do it? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, another way to do it is run up this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, share it with people. Yeah, right, yeah, like, like, you know, Jay's got this podcast, right? <laughs> uh, what, what could happen is in future there could be a f- producer, there, a photographer or dude or whatever you call them. Yeah. We're here and then you bring in people, you know, talented, gifted, yeah. you know, and they could sing or do crazy crap in the studio. Make yeah. it a day event. All right, thank you. I'm out of here. Sounds good. All right, Brian, well, thanks very much, mate. Cheers for coming in. Thanks, it's been Jay. a pleasure. <laughs> we'll speak soon. All right, everybody, peace out. See ya. Get down, get down.